Hello and welcome to the Labore Society's first ever online gala. I'm Father James Peterson, a priest of the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis in beautiful Minnesota. And I'm Sister Lauren Kovalik with the Verbum Dei Missionary Fraternity. And I'm here in Los Angeles, California. Well, we're very grateful you could join us today as we support vocations. We'll be offering up a prayer here at the beginning of our time together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the opportunity to be a part of your mission within the world, to save souls. We ask that you would bless all those who are tuning in, that they would have that generosity of heart, and you would help us as we labor within your vineyard. We make all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, welcome. We are very excited to be with you today. And again, thank you for joining us because behind your desire to attend this gala is God's desire to be here. We're here to celebrate women and men who have found and discovered that treasure hidden in the field. And they're ready and willing to give all, to leave all, in order to become sisters, brothers, and priests. And now, I'd like to introduce Bishop Strickland from the Diocese of Tyler, Texas. I appreciate the opportunity to encourage everyone watching to support the Labore Society. It does great work in the life of the church today. I'm Bishop Joseph Strickland, Bishop of the Diocese of Tyler in Northeast Texas. And we've had the reality of young people seeking to fulfill a calling from God to serve as a priest or to enter into a vowed religious life. And they have significant college debt. The La Barre Society exists to help them with that very practical reality. I thank the La Barre Society and all of you who may be watching this video for your support to them, because your support in helping to deal with something as practical as college debt really does help further the mission of the church to share the truth of Jesus Christ. So thanks to the Library Society, thanks to all of you for supporting them in their great work. Northeast of Dallas, Texas, in the small town of Grand Prairie, Sisters of the Holy Family of Nazareth and their Good Shepherd Convent offer the perfect setting for religious life. For Sister Josephine Garrett, life as an aspirant with the Labore Society meant learning a lot of lessons about what it means to be a religious sister. In 2011, I applied to be a sister with the Sisters of the Holy Family of Nazareth. And at that time, my vocation director told me about a ministry called Labore Society because I had over $70,000 of student loans to resolve. When I initially started training with Labore, I thought like I was the only person who needed help. What I quickly realized is that I did have a gift to share, uh, and it was the gift of this vocation. The Labore Society in and of itself is a formation program, so I wasn't out fundraising for my individual vocation. I was out fundraising for vocations in general. I think that the Labore Society set my formation on like a firm and strong foundation. I participated in two boot camps as an aspirant, and then later I came back as an alumni trainer. Once Labore has you, they never let you go, uh, which is a nice thing. A lot of times you'll hear people say there's a shortage of priests and religious, or there's a shortage of people who want to be priests and religious, and I think the Labore Society has exposed the fact that that's not true. Uh, that there's a problem and it's a solvable problem. It's hard for me to imagine if Labore didn't exist because having student loans and needing to work with Labore, it changed my life. And so I would even say today that I was grateful to have student loans. Hi, I'm uh, Rick Santorum and I just want to uh, thank you for 
your generous support of Labore. Uh, I am a fellow benefactor. Uh, Karen and I have been supporting Labore now. Um, I think is well, probably the best way we can. Uh, we've given our best and brightest uh, to, to Labore. Our daughter Elizabeth is works for Labore and uh, just uh, has thrown her passion and her heart behind uh, this incredible mission of serving this incredible need uh, of the church and for and for all of us uh, to have uh, men and women in in the um, in religious life and clergy and this is uh, as we as we've seen now going through this pandemic where we've uh, many of us most of us have been without the sacraments uh, how how a barren a life is without uh, without the sacraments uh, without uh, you know the the uh, the people who bring us. Uh, in at, in the Catholic Church, who bring us uh, the Lord on a on a daily basis or weekly basis, so um, Labore is uh, is meeting the need of of a church, meeting the need of of our country, and doing it in a way that really is, is encouraging Karen and, I, uh, and 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 me to support them not just with Elizabeth but with also financially. Uh, they're they're doing it consistent with uh, I think the values of what Christ taught uh, to be. Uh, uh, you know, teach teach people how to uh, to fish as opposed to giving them a fish. Uh, the the training that they're receiving, not just to pay for pay their own student debt, uh, but the training they're going to need to um, to to run a parish or to uh, run an, a religious order or uh, other vocations within the church. Those are vitally important things that unfortunately are not uh, well developed in um, in regular uh, education within within the church. So. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the level of accomplishment, over 300 vocations, thanks to Labore, that we would not have had. Uh, and the future is really bright, as long as they have the support to do it. So I'm just uh, here to say thank you, first and foremost, uh, to, uh, to join hands with you as a, as a fellow supporter, and also to, uh, to encourage you to continue, as we will, to support this excellent organization that's meeting they really, if not the number one need, certainly one of the number one needs of the church. God bless. Well, as you can see, there's a real need to support vocations, those who have those financial challenges prior to entering into formation for the priesthood or religious life. Uh, speaking from my own experience, actually, back in 2008, uh, I had discerned that God was calling me to the priesthood, and I had a lot of college loans, and I was prevented from doing so, but my vocation director got me in contact with the Labre Society, by God's grace and the wonderful work of Labore Society, I was able to enter into the seminary formation and then five years later was ordained a priest to serve God and his people. And as Bishop Strickland was saying, we have the opportunity to further the mission of the church today, the opportunity to invest in the next generation of spiritual leaders of our church. And I really loved what Sister Josephine said that a vocation is a gift meant to be shared and that the student loan ba barrier is a solvable problem. For me, working full time in order to pay off both my undergraduate and graduate studies, it would have taken me 20 years, 23 years actually, before I could have begun formation. Working with the Library Society raising funds for all vocations, we were able to reduce that number to two and a half years. As well, when you fundraise with the Labore Society, you have the opportunity to listen and learn the other stories, the other vocation stories, get to know different charisms, and you really become 
and feel yourself part of the Labore family. And now, with deep gratitude, we'd like to introduce the executive director and our dear friend, John Flanagan. Hello, and welcome to the Labore Society first ever virtual gala. My name is John Flanagan, and I am blessed to be the executive director of the Labore Society. I say blessed because every day I get to see the hand of Holy Providence at work. We, the staff and volunteers of the Labore Society, are empowered by you to help deliver this next generation of priests, sisters, and brothers to a country and a church so desperately in need of them. Each one of these aspiring vocations is going to have an unimaginable impact on the lives of thousands of people over the course of their lifetimes. I am daily humbled to be surrounded by individuals who seek to ask some from us that they can give all for all of us. My prayer for you during our time together is that you catch but a glimpse of the miracles that you help make happen every day through the Library Society. You're going to hear about our graduates who, once being freed from that obstacle of student loan debt, are making significant impact in and through the communities and dioceses they serve. You'll hear the training you provide these men and women through our programs or as one vocation director described it, a process that addresses the human, spiritual, and pastoral dimensions of formation in a way that no seminary can provide. Personally, I like to think of it as a time to stretch the heart for all involved. Every six month class, we the lady give of what we have, freeing our hands to receive God's abundant blessings. They, on the other hand, give of who they are, stretching their heart, preparing them to spiritually embrace all of God's children, praying for them, caring for them as their own, as our future priests, sisters, and brothers. Earlier this year, when things started to change, our ways of invitation and evangelization became drastically altered. Many people expressed concern that quarantines would stop us dead in our tracks. We, the staff and board of La Varenne, knew different we knew we had a secret weapon, a weapon that no quarantine, no economic downturn, or even civil unrest could hamper. We have you. Each one of you is faithfully joined in the mission of the Labor Aid Society because you see the need for priests, sisters, and brothers now, not decades from now. Pope Francis has described the church as a battlefield hospital. We see these aspiring vocations as our doctors, our medics, our nurses. Thank you for ensuring a better future for all who enter those hospital's doors. God bless you, and thank you again.
Hi, I'm Father Cassidy Stinson, and I wanted to share a few quick words with you about the great work that the Library Society is doing to build up the church today. The Library Society, as you probably know, exists to meet one of the great needs that exists among young people who are trying to pursue a vocation to the priesthood or the religious life. Almost 50%, almost half of young people who are trying to discern their vocation face a major obstacle, and that is student loan debt. The Library Society does a lot of great work with these young people to form them and to train them as they go through the process of fundraising to try and pay off these loans. And they work together, they support one another in a lot of really beautiful ways, spiritually as well as practically, as they go through that process. Now, what I've always personally really loved about the Library Society, I've had the chance now to get to know several young people who have gone through the process of fundraising and then entering into seminary and religious formation, is that the formation they receive in the Library Society really helps them to understand that this process of fundraising isn't just about money. It is really an apostolic experience for them. And so what I've always really appreciated and loved is that when they come through their training, these young people are learning to share the gospel through the lens of their vocation story and to share the witness of how God has touched them and touched their lives. The Library Society makes this possible for them, not just in their future vocations, but really even now as they're going through this initial process of discernment and fundraising. And so I love the society, I love the Library Society for this part of their mission in particular, is that they are doing incredible work in the church today, right now, to help these young people that you see share the gospel, share the witness of their own lives, and how God has worked in them. So I personally encourage you to continue supporting the work that the Library Society is doing. They're doing an incredible service to so many young men and women, and there's really nobody else who is doing what they are doing. So I hope this will encourage you to take to heart any way that you can support them, whether it is through your prayers, through your generosity, Please continue to pray for all of these young men and women as they are going through their own process of discernment. This is a challenging time, especially now in the middle of these uh, strange circumstances through pandemics and all sorts of civil challenges. We need holy men and women. We need heroic vocations. We need people to step up and say yes to the call. The Library Society is helping make that possible. And so anything you can do to support them will be a great service to them, to these new vocations, and to the church. So please know my own prayers, and God bless. Good evening, evening Lowry family. My name is Scott Widman. This is my lovely wife, Janie. We've been part of the Lowry organization and family for four or five years. It's truly been a blessing. We'd also like to say thank you very much to all the staff and the volunteers with La Beret and all their hard work. What I'm so passionate about this organization is the fact that men and women who are willing to dedicate their lives to the Lord, um, to me that's a big yes. And so financially, Scott and I um, have no problem donating money for them for their big yes. So it makes me feel really good that I'm doing something uh, good for the people who are willing to enter the religious lives. So. Yeah. And rarely does a gift to an organization last a lifetime. With La Beret, you can truly know that your gift lasts a lifetime. When you support these young men and women in their vocation call, you'll find a lifetime of prayer and good works for mankind. And that's rare in any organization. So thank you again, La Beret. Thank you for your support. You betcha. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Scott and Janie Widman have personally been a blessing to me. 
Scott was my accountability partner the last year that I was fundraising. And he not only helped me to set weekly attainable objectives, and he kept me accountable to what he knew I was capable of, of doing, but his unfailing encouragement and his prayers truly inspired me to keep fighting for my vocation. That is why we are Labore family. That's a beautiful witness, Sister Lauren. Thank you very much for that. We are so grateful for wonderful supporters like Scott and Janie and good people like yourselves to support Labore Society with your prayers and financially as you're able. Remember, there are three ways to financially support the Labore Society. You can call. Text to give. Or visit the website. Well, we're now going to send things over to Brother Mary Leedy in Norcia, Italy. So let's say buongiorno to Brother Mary. the spiritual significance of all music now I, I can see because God is beauty and music is one reflection of that I'm Sister Martha Victoria, and today is the day of my investiture, so it means I received my whole habit, my um, scapular, my veil, my rosary, um, and I'm really just so excited to um, have this time with Jesus, and the past couple days I've been on retreat um, and just allowed the Lord to um, be with me in a really powerful way um, and learn more how to open my heart to Him um, and to receive Him. Um, in a more full way. And I just want to um, thank all my benefactors and to all of the library community because um, without you, this wouldn't be possible and um, it wouldn't be possible for me to live my life and 
to live with my awesome sisters, the sisters of Mary Morningstar. So I just um, praise God today and exalt him and lift all of your intentions up to him today. Hi, my name is Father Dave Pabanca, and I'm the president of Franciscan University of Steubenville. It's a pleasure of mine just to be with you just for a moment this evening as you celebrate the Labore Society Gala. Uh, I just want to let you know of my prayers and my appreciation for the work that your society has done for so many years and such a great blessing to the church. It's also been a great blessing to many students from Franciscan University that have benefited from your support and your ministry. As much as ever, probably greater than ever, it's easy to say that, but we are in need of priests and religious who, who love Christ, who want to offer their life for the church and to be able to minister and serve in the church. But the reality is, is we live in a world that has become more difficult to do that because of financial obligations. And, and I would hate for that to be a barrier for somebody to be able to serve the church and serve Christ in the church. So we're just really, really grateful for the work and the ministry that the Labore Society does and being help, be able to move that stumbling block out of the way so that young people can serve the church. So again, thank you so much for your work. And I would just encourage everybody to support the work of the Labore Society because it does a great work and a great ministry to the church. Know of my prayers and the prayers of the university. May the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, my name is Liam Rogers, and I've been an AP and an APS with Labore for about six years now, I think, if I look back on it. I first ran into Labore, I was at a convention down in uh, Florida, Orlando. And I was running back and forth from, from through the lobby of a hotel, and there was a Legatus convention there. And every time I ran by, I would see all of these uh, Catholic services outside advertising their services to the Legatus Society. And I talked to a lot of them as I went by. And I met John Flanagan and Bill Lemire and started to talk to them about what they're doing and what their mission was. And I was completely blown away. I thought it was the most brilliant thing I'd ever heard in my life. i had been praying my whole life for vocations to the priesthood and the sisterhood and the brotherhoods, all the religious life. And this was the answer. This was the way to do it. And ever since I started and been involved in La Bure, um, the joy of the, asp the aspirants <clears throat> The joy of the aspirants is contagious, and the peace that you feel when you're with them is incredibly powerful. Um, becoming part of this group is one of the most important things I've done in my adult life. And I finally feel like I'm making a difference for the world at large with my Catholicism. Before, it was, I was serving myself mostly, trying to help where I could, but this is a real job to help the church, and it's incredibly satisfying. So I hope you all get involved, and I hope uh, you all stay involved, and I hope that uh, the La Brea Society continues to grow and strengthen. Thanks very much. As you can see, the Labore Society, the efforts that it has within the country in Italy and around the world, is doing God's will to build up his church here. And so we're very grateful for the support of wonderful people like yourselves, for your own prayers and financial contributions. It makes a huge difference to help rescue vocations and continue to build up God's loving family here on earth. Um, you know, Sister Lauren and I are co-hosting this. I'm here in Minnesota. She's there in California. We're socially distancing, uh, but we're doing this for the sake of continuing to promote the wonderful efforts of Labore Society. And what a joy it was to witness Sister Martha Victoria's Day of Investure. I mean, you can feel her excitement, can't you? I know I can. And as Father 
Rivanka was saying, we need to increase vocations to the church, vocations like Sister Martha Victoria's. And as well, as Liam was saying, we can take that step together. Together, we can make a difference in building up the church, in building up the kingdom. So right now, it is our pleasure to introduce Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, president of Christendom College. Hello, I'm Dr. Timothy O'Donnell, the president of Christendom College in Front Royal, Virginia. I'm very delighted to have this opportunity to express my support for the great work of Lavare. You know, receiving a fine Catholic education, an education that is faithful to the tradition of the Catholic Church, which seeks to encourage the fruitful relationship between faith and reason, truly is a natural setting to help foster vocations to the priesthood and to the religious life. Here at Christendom, we now have 93 graduates who are ordained priests and 61 graduates who are religious. And here at Christendom, for any graduate who takes a final vow of poverty, we have always forgiven their student debt. I am thrilled that through the work of Lavare, they have helped over 300 men and women enter the priesthood and religious life. What a great tribute to the work of this organization. And certainly, without their vital help, those precious vocations might have been lost or been seriously delayed due to student loan debt. So thank God for this organization. I was also pleased to see that several Christendom alumni have also been helped by Labore. And I think it's also laudable that in their program, everyone in that program works extremely hard to mitigate their student loans rather than simply receiving a handout. You know, if there ever was a time when our troubled culture and nation stood in need of the witness of a holy celibate priest and consecrated religious willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of the kingdom of God, that time is right now. I want to lend my voice in thanking God for the fine work of Lavare. God bless you all. Second year postulant, Cialinette Cologne, believes the Lord was calling her to serve with the Sisters of Christian Charity. After graduating from law school, Sialanet traveled to India where she served with the Missionaries of Charity. She returned home to New York City and with a renewed sense of leading a simpler life, she followed a path to formation. As I was discerning, I, I realized that this was really a deep desire within me to be a sister to enter religious life. I realized that I had this obstacle in my student loans, but God was starting to resolve everything. Labore Society was extremely supportive in providing me the tools I needed to resolve the obstacle that I had. From the very start of my relationship with them, they provided me with the training at the boot camp with great experienced persons in various areas related to fundraising. Labore has been a blessing in my life because I don't think I ever dreamt that I would find an organization that would be so supportive of people who are so committed to the future of the church, who truly care about priests and sisters, and they are committed to the church, they are committed to their faith, they're committed to religious life, to the priesthood, they're committed to ensuring the future of the Catholic Church. Hi, my name is Deacon Bill Duffert, and I am studying to be a priest in the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis. I participated in several library society classes and was finally able to begin seminary in 2017. It's a pretty common trend in dioceses across the country to have a threshold amount for student loan debt. Any man that desires to enter the seminary must be below that threshold before he can begin. That was my own experience in the Archdiocese. Because of the amount of student loan debt I had, I was well above that threshold, and I needed to resolve that student loan debt before I could begin. Thanks be to God, the Labore Society has made it their mission to address this very issue. They have helped hundreds of men and women answer God's call. I am one of those men, and I know many more like me. 
We need priests, we need brothers, and we need sisters now more than ever. There's a sense of urgency here, too, because we really cannot afford to lose any more vocations because of student loan debt. Thank you all for listening, and God bless. Hello, we are the Marian Sisters of the Diocese of Lincoln. My name is Sister Faustina, and I'm a temporary professed sister, and I was able to enter after one class with Labore. Hi, I'm Sister Gabriel, and I fundraised with Labore for one class, and I'm now a first-year novice. Hi, I'm Taylor, and I did Labore for two classes before I was able to enter in January, and I'm a postulant. My name is Sister Amy Marie, and I help those who are going through the program to enter our community. And currently, we have one young woman hoping to enter in the fall who just finished her class, and another one who will begin her first class in July. Thank Labore for all the help that they've provided for our community and helping young women enter. We would like to sing you a little song, um, a version of Ave Maria, because we are the Marian Sisters. As Siali Net was sharing, Labore really is committed to the future of the church and really empowers all of us who want to become a, a part of the fabric of the church, to have the tools and the training that we need in order to overcome our student loan barriers. It was really um, wonderful to see Deacon Bill Deffert. I was in one of uh, the Labore classes with him. And now, 
again, it's just such a joy to hear and see that he is today a deacon, a transitional deacon. It also gave me great joy to see Sister Faustina with the Marians. And uh, I remember getting a phone call from her before she entered her community. She called me from Kansas City uh, because no one in her community had gone through the process of working with the Labore Society. So she was asking me about how this works. And, you know, she was a little nervous, and I reassured her that it was, you know, a community, a family that really is committed to helping us. And so now, how beautiful is it to see this ripple effect of hope that she herself has created within her community? Because the Library Society not only helped her to overcome her student loan barrier, but as you saw in that video, several members of her community have now been helped and are in formation because of the Library Society and the support of so many people across the country. So true. Well said, Sister Lauren. Yeah, the efforts of Labore Society are very far-reaching. We saw a lot of success stories from those who were faithful in listening to God's calling and went through the training and the boot camps. They stayed with it, and now they are helping to continue to build up God's kingdom. For our young people, there's a catch-22 in regard to vocations. They're all told that they need a college degree to get by. Some are even told to pursue their vocation they need a college degree. And a lot of times they're taking on a lot of student loan debt, which then can block them proceeding to pursue their vocation. It can take years to pay off a student loan debt and vocations can be lost. The Labore Society is a wonderful organization that helps to rescue these vocations. And it's a charity from the church to, to give towards this organization, but it's much more than charity. It's formation for our young men and women who are, will be the future priests and religious uh, in the life of the church. They get a wonderful formation. And so if God has blessed you with the means to be able to help these, these young men and women, as the vocation director for the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, and on behalf of the whole church, I ask that you please be generous. Thank you and God bless. One of the great blessings of being a parent is watching a child go into their college years and to have this wonderful education. And one of the challenges that this young person faces when they recognize that God is calling them to religious life or the priesthood is that this incredibly wonderful education has brought with it a huge debt. And so one of the gifts that Labore has truly brought to our young people is the capacity to hope, to hope that this debt doesn't have to slow me down from answering God's call. I've seen that personally in our own community where young women have entered because of the fact they've received good training from Labore on how to fundraise. And then from that, to be able to enter into the joy of their Carmelite vocation one story in particular, a young woman who had received this gift from La Bure ended up being able to pay her last college payment on the day of her first vows, July 16th. I think of many blessings that have come to us because La Bure has been willing to invest in our young people. More than ever, we need La Bure to be there for our young people, to courageously respond to their call that they are not held back from saying yes to the Lord who longs to use them for the good of the church. God bless you and please open your hearts to love Ray. Hi, my name is Jim Musgrave and I feel called to discern priesthood in the Archdiocese of Detroit. So I was raised in a fairly secular home in Metro Detroit. Uh, we were a family of priesters, that is Christians who only go to church on Christmas and Easter. And while my parents were Lutheran, I was not baptized as a child. So my journey to the Catholic faith actually began when my parents pulled me out of public school and sent me to Detroit Catholic Central High School. And my conversion was intellectual more than anything else at the beginning. So it's at Catholic Central where I first learned about sacred scripture and who Jesus was and what his teachings meant. And it all sort of made sense to me. I accepted it as the truth, but in my immaturity, that's where I stopped. So I spent the next four years at Hillsdale College attending a variety of different Christian worship services, including Catholic Mass. 
And it's because at that time I was really craving a more permanent place for God in my life. And fast forward four years later, and after a lot of hard work, I was in medical school. And I was thriving academically, but really struggling mentally and emotionally. So after two and a half years, I made the decision to leave with absolutely no idea of where my life was going or what direction it was taking. And as one can imagine, that was a pretty dark time for me. I felt like I had failed my mentors, my parents, everyone who had supported me, and I felt I had failed myself. But it was during that time in medical school, and especially during that sort of lost period afterwards, that I kept gravitating back towards Mass. And I can't pinpoint an exact moment or event, but I knew that time was when I had my first real encounter with Jesus. And it was amidst all that uncertainty that I knew that if I kept following along his path, everything was going to be okay. And so I rooted my identity as a son of God, and I found direction in his love for me. And as a result of that encounter, I was baptized and confirmed at the Easter Vigil in 2012. Now, at this point, I would consider myself sacramentalized but not evangelized. Well, what does that mean? So I enjoyed spending time with the Lord at Mass and all that he had to offer in his church, but I really wasn't ready to give up some of my own selfish wants and desires for the benefit and growth of my relationship with Jesus. And I really wasn't uh, taking any steps to step outside my comfort zone and grow as a disciple. It wasn't until I went through Alpha at our parish and met an incredible group of young adults that I really developed a deep and meaningful relationship with Jesus. And it was because of their authentic and attractive witness. And I'll never forget during Alpha, during the retreat, when I was prayed over for the first time. And that's the first time I truly let the Holy Spirit into my heart. I spent some time in prayer, just growing deeper and deeper in love with Jesus. And as I grew deeper and deeper in love with Jesus, I began to discern what his will was for my life. And he placed in me the desire to present myself as a candidate for seminary. And that desire was really born out of prayer. It's rooted in love and it's driven by mission. And so after the Lord placed that desire in my heart, I knew that my student loan debt would be an obstacle for me uh, further, going further information entering seminary. So I made the decision to give away most of my possessions. I sold my home and I applied all those proceeds towards debt reduction. And it's with the uh, help of the Labore Society to further remove that obstacle of loan debt that I uh, will be able to continue formation. And I'm so very grateful for everyone at the Labore Society, my fellow uh, aspirants and all the generous benefactors. And in a, in, the, in a way that the Lord often breaks into people's lives through brokenness and wounds and trauma, I feel like he's doing the same right now. Everyone seems to be wailing for peace, for justice, for love, and the only way to those things is in and through Christ. And so he needs men who are going to suit on armor, go to battle against sin, and bring purification through and healing through the sacraments. And so it's with uh, the intercession of our Blessed Mother and the power of the Holy Spirit that I hope to join God and you on mission to help win his world back. Why would somebody want to be a sister? I, it's hard to answer on anything but a personal level. I know why I would want to be a sister. It's because things will eventually fade. Things break. They don't, they don't fulfill. For a moment they fulfill and then it's emptiness again. You get a new toy, and then, you know, even as a sister, you get a new pair of shoes, and that's pretty exciting. <laughs> but they get dirty, and they wear, and all of this passes away. And I think for me, the reason why is because I'm living for eternity, and I can start that now. When I'm outside of the convent, when I go on home visit, or different things like that, they'll say, Sister Carrie Ann is so joyful. I just see the joy radiating from her face. And I'm not really doing anything special or, <laughs> you know, like it just, it just comes forth. It's a gift for me to be with you this evening for this exciting event in support of the La Bure Society. My name is Bishop Andrew Cousins. I'm the Auxiliary Bishop here in the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis. Before becoming a bishop, I had the privilege to teach for many years at the St. Paul Seminary, and I have dedicated much of my life to strengthening seminary formation. I also have a deep love for religious life, and I've helped dozens of young women to discern their vocation and spent as much time as I can offering retreats and conferences for women and men religious. 
Over the years, I've had the opportunity to see firsthand the important work that Labore does in support of vocations for our church. This is why I was so eager to be with you tonight and help support this important work. I was reminded of this vital work that Labore does for our local church last May as I ordained seven men as transitional deacons for our archdiocese here of St. Paul in Minneapolis. One of the men I ordained had been a Labore aspirant. And if it weren't for Labore, he may not have been taking this important step towards the priesthood. And I know many other young women and men who've been helped by Labore over the years. It's made a huge difference in helping them respond to God's call. We've all heard about the problem of rising student loan debt today. And this trend has serious impact on our seminaries and houses of formation. Nearly half of all aspiring priests and religious are prevented from entering formation because of their student loan debt. Seminaries and religious institutions cannot afford to assume the burden of that education debt. The unfortunate result is that vocations are often postponed, sometimes for decades. In fact, rarely, but it happens, they're lost forever. I don't have to tell you how desperately the church needs these vocations. The times we are living in are difficult, in many ways, these have been dark days. But even in this time, I've seen that God is giving vocations to young people. Good always comes out of these crises. We can't afford to lose a single vocation. Priestly and religious vocations are in some ways the very heart of our church, helping to give that lifeblood to all the church's members, pouring out their lives in service so that the members can grow in holiness and fulfill their potential. We need to be sure that every young man that Christ is calling to the priesthood is able to say yes to that call. We need to be sure that every woman and man God is calling to religious life is able to say yes to that call. The Labore Society has helped hundreds of men and women answer God's call since 2003. I encourage you to be as generous as you can in your giving tonight. Labore needs your help so that they can continue the vital work of bringing priests, brothers, and sisters to the church. Thank you, and God bless you. There are so many who are building up God's kingdom through their vocations as priests, religious sisters, and religious brothers. And we're so grateful uh, to wonderful people like we saw, as well as for all of you who are watching from home. Uh, we heard Jim Musgrave as he was thinking about uh, originally a life to be a medical doctor, but then God ultimately working within his heart to be a doctor of souls. Then we heard from the auxiliary bishop here in the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. Uh, who in his time at the St. Paul Seminary, I lived across the hall from him my first year. He spoke about the good work that Labore Society is doing through generous benefactors like yourselves. So thank you again for joining us this evening. It really has been a joy to sh share this time with you. So thank you so much for joining us. And let us remember and have that certainty that today we can tangibly take a step to strengthen our church, that we can support all of the women and men who have said yes to God, that desire to be sisters, brothers, and priests. So may we go forth and continue to pray for and support vocations and the Labore Society. Well, it's been fun to co-host this with you, Sister Lauren, and thank you to all from watching at home. Uh, we'll just offer a blessing here to conclude our time together. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all.
Ascension has been your faithful collaborator for years. When coronavirus hit, we brought Mass to your living room and prayed the rosary with your family. This fall, whether you're starting a Bible study or looking for Catholic books to deepen your faith, we stand ready to support you and your parish, both in person and online. With our newly enhanced digital platforms, our options give you options. Visit ascensionpress.com to learn more.